Hi guys, I did a training session today and I've already had people call and ask if there was any way they could get a copy of it. And the answer is no, but I thought I would try and do a generic one just for a general audience. So I'm gonna share my screen and sit back, relax. This is wine 6.30, so get your glass of wine. I'm, I have no wine today. I'm just not in the right mood for it. So anyway, here we go. So like I said, no wine for me today. I'm still in kind of professional mode. So nobody cares who I am, what I do, who I am, what I've accomplished. I promise you, and no one cares about you either. What they want to know is what are they going to get out of it? You're wondering right now, is this a good investment of your time? So I am going to talk two languages. I'm going to talk professional and I'm going to talk personal. So one of the things you're going to get out of today, if you're a salesperson, is you're going to be a top performer and communicator after this session. You're also going to increase interest from new potential clients while you're prospecting by translating vendor speak into client speak. Now for your personal life, I promise you these same tactics will make you have a better marriage. As Scotty and I have been married 30 years and uh, thankfully he hasn't read any of my books so he doesn't own any of my tricks. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing you're going to do is you're going to increase your relationships. If you're in sales, you will be able to establish credibility, trust, and rapport instantly. But if you're in a family, you're going to increase, you learn how to increase the love in your family. This is about brain chemistry. And look at this uh, MRI of this mother with this baby and see all the brain chemistry taking place right now. When, when there's love and there's happiness, the right chemicals are being released. And why are we not doing that in business more often? The other thing is, you're, and, you, and if you're married, you know this already, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And that's one of the things we're gonna improve on our marriages or we're gonna improve in our business relationships. The other thing is, this, these, you know, it's easy to click with someone right away, but it's not real and it's not lasting. This is gonna be a long-term rapport. You're gonna establish long-term rapport and you're going to learn the RTH formula, the Viznostic RTH formula, which I have trademarked. And then you're going to be able to sell immediately by what I just said, learning that it's not what you say, it's how you say it. In marriage, you're going to have a longer marriage, if you <laughs> know these tricks. And you will get your way more often. So here's what we're going to cover today. First, I'm going to tell you a story of what happened at Remax. Then we're going to get into this icon right here is a very important in business. The guy on the right or the lady on the right, they've got a message to communicate and it's so clear to them and it's so well organized. But as they're speaking, their audience, their spouse, their client, it is not coming across the way they think it is. And this is the terms I use in my book on the right is vendor speak. So clear to them. But to the client on the left, it's not at all. Same thing as a wife and a husband or a husband and a wife, okay? So we're going to learn how to make both sides of the brain look the same so that your message is received as intended. Then I'm going to tell you the history of business, like how did this whole crazy thing start? We're going to get into some neuroscience. Specifically, we're going to learn why people hate salespeople so much. And not just that, but you know on Facebook, you're, why are you not convincing the other people to vote the way you're voting, right? You're going to learn why that's not effective. You're also going to learn the power of threes. It's also called the rule of threes. <laughs> it is crazy, but today a goldfish has a, strong, a longer attention span than we do. So we're going to explore that a little bit. We're going to go into the RTH, which you will never remember. Acronyms, acronyms are bad. Don't use them. Instead, use graphics. So envision a giant green dollar sign. If you're in Europe, a euro, whatever your currency is, envision that in green. And then a clock, a red 
flop. And then a toolbox. That is the RTH formula. The dollar sign represents the R, which is results. The clock is the timeline in which you're going to get those results. Like if you save a million dollars in a month, it's way different. But if you save a million dollars over 30 years, big difference. And then the toolbox is what you've been programmed to talk about, what you care about yourself, you, me, my, my company. It's a very self-centric toolbox is what you do and how you do it. And today, I guarantee you're saying that first, and then you're kind of as a side note going, oh yeah, and if you do all these things, you'll get this result. We have a short attention span, which remember the goldfish? We're going to talk about that. You don't have time to talk about your toolbox. You've already lost them. So you need to, to lead with results. And then the final thing, which you probably can't see because my video is on top of it, but we're going to kind of pull it all together and explain why your life's going to be better with all these things. Okay, so here's the first story. This actually happened to me in January. I was a breakout session speaker, not the keynote. So there's a room for about 100 people in my room. Well, as I was going, people were texting and telling people to come in. And I mean, there were people lined up in the back of the room, this, in both sides of the room. And they were bringing in chairs while I was talking. The room was getting hot because there were too many people in there. They had to remove a wall to expand <laughs> the room. And, you know, it was craziness while I was up there speaking that all this activity in Flurry was going around while people were trying to get into the room and in the session. So there was standing room only. Um, when my session was over, all my books sold out within 15 minutes. I received over 40 texts, which in my, in my presentation, I actually said, text me your most difficult um, listing, and I'll show you how we can translate it into business and, and, and actually sell your property. And then... <laughs> And it was just crazy. Uh, I couldn't believe I, I even the next speaker was trying to get hooked up and I was swarmed with people trying to set up meetings with me. So huge success. Now, why did that happen? Was it my speech? No, let me tell you, because I, I hadn't done my speech yet. Why was I getting all this flurry before? Well, here's why. When they asked me to do a description for the breakout session, I could have said, you're going to learn how to leverage neuroscience and diagnostics, um, and you're going to learn how to apply them in real estate and other areas of your life. You're going to learn how to establish rapport with your clients. Um, all of the things that you see in the black is what most people would have put in a description, but I didn't. I used the diagnostic formula, and green represents the R in the RTH formula, which is the results. So look at this, increase sales and inventory, make your life better, establish rapport, increase interest from new potential buyers, and sell more. Those are the results. And how quickly did you get them? Immediately, in just two hours, because my speech was two hours long. Instant, immediately. So I, I have those in red to represent the clock. Anything in black is the toolbox. Notice the order. The green always comes first. You don't have much time to get their attention. And then how quickly are you going to get these results? Is it going to happen right away? Or are you going to have to, is it going to take a year to learn this stuff? So this description is why all of the frenzy occurred during my session. And then the next day they put me as a keynote in a much larger room that fit hundreds and hundreds of people instead of just 100. And it was also full. Same thing on the, the next day was Friday. The description was very similar. So, this is what happens in our world. Whether it's a presentation, whether it's a Facebook post, whether it's an argument or <laughs> a, a debate with friends about politics, or whether it is a relationship with your spouse, you feel like your beliefs and your thoughts are perfect. They don't. And so when you see this in the presentation, what, I, what this represents is on the right is vendor speak, on the left is the result of vendor speak. Client speak would be if both of these heads looked identical. They both look like the one on the right, not the left. <laughs> okay, so here's the history. I had a client and I had presented to him, he fell asleep. And when I woke him up, you know, he was mortified. He said, come back tomorrow, I'm really tired. I worked all night. So I came up the next day, and this time he was taking notes, and I thought, oh, he's into it this time. I went over to see what he was doing during my presentation, and he was making his grocery list. So he wasn't paying attention twice, 
And this time he finally said, look, Pammy, I'm not going to buy from you. I'm sorry I wasted your time. Um, it just, things are crazy at work right now. And I just, I just can't, I'm not, I don't have a budget. I don't have anything. There's no way I can buy from you. And so I licked my wounds. I packed up. I left. I was shocked. No one had ever act, had acted that way before. People were buying what I was selling like crazy. All I had to do was present. Sometimes they even stopped me in the middle of my presentation to tell me, you know, when, when and how do they, you know, go ahead and buy this. So, uh, dogs are going to bark. So when, um, I thought about this a lot and it bothered me and I called him and I said, and, and I really evaluated my presentation. Like what was in my presentation making him fall asleep? I thought it was fabulous. It was about me and how great I was and the company I was. And why was it not resonating? And I realized for the first time how selfish my presentation was. And it didn't talk about him at all or what he was going to get from it. And so I reworded things just to, to talk about results and like customers that I had that were having these great results and put them in a different wording. Instead of me saying my company, this, and I do this, I put it in the first person and I called him back and I said, let me buy you lunch. You got to eat. So we went and he says, as long as you know that I'm not going to buy from you. And so I, we get at lunch and I said, I'm going to make a statement and you tell me if you can say this today, you wish you could say this today or it's not important. And the very first thing I said was something like, you know, backup and restore is a very easy process. And I watched his eyes shooting around. Now I knew I had them. I mean, I learned that in sales training that if somebody's eyes are moving around, they're actually engaged with you. So his eyes were moving around, he was like, oh gosh, no, they're not. And then he started telling me a story on, on what happened. Why was he working so late? Someone got fired because the CEO needed an email and they couldn't find it. They couldn't restore it. He had accidentally deleted it. And it was just chaos. And so I went through all the other things and it dawned on him. I could solve all these problems he was having. And he made a comment. He said, Kim, he pushed his plate aside. He didn't even eat. He goes, can I assume you can do all this stuff? Is that why we're going over? And I said, yes. And he goes, why didn't you tell me this? I go, I did twice. And so this is when I realized that it isn't what you say, it's how you say it. And I was talking too much about me and my company instead of him and how we could make his life better. And that's what this Gnostics is. So this next thing we're going to talk about is just some basic neuroscience. Um, our brain chemistry is really important. And if you don't get the brain chemistry right in the first few seconds, it's really difficult to get it at all. So if you start off, like you notice this presentation today, I didn't start off talking about me, my credentials, who I am, why I'm qualified to talk to you. I went immediately into what you're going to get from the time that you're investing into this. Very few presentations do that. In fact, I've never had a company give me a presentation to, that did that. You may want to talk about the year over year growth and the stock price and you know, publicly held and a number of customers, how long we've been in business and nobody cares. Seriously, they don't. So put that aside for a second. The other thing that is a problem is people hate salespeople. Why is that? Why do people hate salespeople? Okay, we'll get, let me get back to that in just a second. We're also going to talk about the rule of threes, the power of threes. So you, you're taught in sales training, basic one-on-one, never ask a closed ended question. For those that don't know, a closed-ended question is a yes or no answer. That's two choices, yes or no. People don't even listen to you if you give them a two-answer, yes or no. They'll just be like, no, 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 no. They're wired to say no. Get, get it over with. Get out of here. Go away. Never ask a closed-ended question. But if you ask three things, and, and, and I don't even like questions. Questions trigger a, well, the fight or flight. That's what this represents. Questions trigger fight or flight. And if you don't believe me, let me tell you, give you an example. Since this came out this year, I guarantee there wasn't a person that's listening to this right now that was like, oh my God, I was so excited when I got the census. I couldn't wait to fill it out. Because it's questions. It's, it wasn't hard. It took 10 minutes, but nobody wants to do it. Why do we want to answer questions? Or maybe you're walking through a mall and someone with a clipboard approaches you. Do you have the time for a survey? No. Or you were on a support call and they did a great job and they're like, at the end, would you just answer a brief survey? Most of us will do it because we're nice. They gave us good service. We feel bad for them. We're going to help them. They helped us. But I'm telling you, I work for a company. Less than 2% of calls actually fill out that survey. They don't like doing it. So if you don't, you avoid asking a question, but instead you make a statement. I'm going to make a statement and you tell me, I can say this today. I wish I could say this today. It's not important. 
If you give them that, you hijack their brain. Now they, they're like, oh, this is going to be hard. I've got to really concentrate on every word they're saying. And when you're doing this and you hijack their brain, you're forcing a visualization to occur. When you force a visualization, these brain chemistry really goes into play. And it's getting them very engaged. And if you're doing it right, they're going to envision their life better with you in it, which makes them want to buy. You do not want to sell someone. You do not want to persuade somebody. You must let them make that decision themselves. As soon as people feel like they're being persuaded, they feel stupid. You're insulting their intelligence. You're telling them what to think. Don't tell them what to think. Help them figure out what they want to think. All right, this is a slide. Do not, right now you're not listening to anything I'm saying because you're trying to read the slide. This is what is wrong with presentations today. People put too many words on slides. You don't want words. Every single word here is being translated into a visual and people are trying to figure out why do they care about this stuff. So I only put this in here as a placeholder, but we are gonna talk about storytelling and business with storytelling. First, we're gonna do an, an exercise and I really encourage anybody that's watching this right now to do this. Grab somebody and y'all do it together. Look at each other's eyes when you do this, okay? All right, but for now, if you're alone, whatever, get ready. I'm gonna say a word. You describe to me what you see, what you see, what is the first visualization that pops into your head. Ready? The word is money. Okay, so if I was in a real life session, like when I'm doing a keynote, I do this and I tell people to pair up and I tell them they have five seconds to do this. And then after the five seconds, I start talking like I'm doing right now. And but people are still talking. And I make fun of them. I, I, I notice the people that are paying attention, like, so here's what's happening to those people. They have just released chemistry in their brain and they can't shut up. And that's what you want from your clients or your spouse. When you want, instead of asking a question, you want to trigger them to want to tell you what's going on in, in their world. What are they, what do they want to talk about? What's important to them? And here's some of the examples of stuff I've gotten. When I say the word money, a lot of people say they saw a color. They didn't see a thing, they saw a color. This is the most common, either a dollar sign, a bag of coins, a stack of cash, something like this graphic is usually what people say. However, I've also heard my house, my mortgage payment, a bank, a lot of times it's something physical, like a car or a structure. Other things are debt. Some things are negative, like they talk about their mortgage or their ex-wife or their alimony or their child support or their student debt, you know, the, the, the negative stuff. Other people think of Bitcoin or 401k or savings, things that are more positive. Investing, a lot of times people will say investing. So it's weird how some people think cash out, other people think cash in. But here's what's weird, and there will always be somebody that does this. I, I was really clear on tell me what you see. Tell me what pops into your head. So many people will tell me an emotion. Oh, evil. Money is evil. Oh, I'm sad. I, I actually had a woman in a presentation. She started crying so fast. And I could just feel, I could feel the pain overwhelm her. I was looking right at her when I said the word money. And it was like I, I hit her with a brick. It was awful. Other people, it's exciting. Ooh, shopping, new, yay. New clothes, new shoes, new purse, whatever. So some people get joy when they hear the word money. So this is where I, if, if you were live, I would ask you to hit in the chat or to tell me, did you see, did you see anything that I didn't already just show you? And it's, there's always something new and it's always fun for me to hear the unique ones. So Here's back to some of the neuroscience. This is worth finding on YouTube. It's a guy named Morris Macy. It was done in the 80s. It's hysterical because it's so appropriate even for 2020. But this guy, he's, his video is called, You Are Who You Are Because of Where You Were When. And it is brilliant. So you've heard of Myers-Briggs. You've probably heard of DISC. Uh, we definitely know the difference between men and women and the way they think. There's also generational thing. Do you know there's never been a two generations that conflict more than millennials and Gen Zs? You would think it would be like the baby boomers and the millennials and the Gen Zs, but no, millennials do not get Gen Zs. They annoy them to pieces. But 
Um, I, I digress, I could do a whole session just on that. But the point here is you are who you are because of where you were when. And so when we did that money exercise, all the different things people saw, they felt good and bad, words are subjective. They're subjective because of who you were when, where you were when. Now, this is a really important graphic because here's a man and a woman. They're looking at a word. They're looking at letters and they're translating those letters into two completely different visuals. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned from this money exercise. First of all, and this is the most important and the most incredible lesson learned. I've been doing this since 2009 and nobody ever, 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 ever has said they saw the letters M-O-N-E-Y. Because our brains don't see letters, our brains translate letters, just like a computer translates binary codes, uh, uh, zeros and ones into something visual that we can understand. We take letters and convert them and translate them into something we understand. So if you're presenting or you're having a discussion and you're saying a word, depending on your audience, they're, they're translating it totally different. So if you want to be persuasive and you want to get an accurate message across, then you need to use the right graphic with the word. So I would say the word money and I would show you what I want you to see. And that will plant the visual into your head and not just not force you to have to come up with your own visual. Very important. So a bullet with the letters is vendor speak. A bullet with the letters and a graphic is client speak. Here's a really funny example. So this was an ad that went out, a singles ad, it was in the Atlanta Journal, and I'll just read it. Single black female seeks male companionship, ethnicity not important. I'm a very good looking girl who loves to play. I love long walks in the woods, riding in your pickup truck, hunting, camping, and fishing trips. Busy winter nights, lying by the fire. Candlelight dinners will have me eating out of your hand. When you get home from work, I'll be at the front door wearing only what nature gave me. Call this number and ask for Daisy. So you can imagine, first of all, they painted a really good visual. They knew exactly what the audience wants, right? They painted how their life is going to be better with them in it. And guess what happened? This was 1,500 men found themselves talking to the Atlantic Humane Society about an eight-week-old Labrador retriever. How cute is that? So the Gnostics is powerful and it's effective. Imagine if this was your prospecting email. Wouldn't you like this kind of response? It's possible, not without being deceptive, it's possible to paint a visualization of and be compelling enough and talk their language and what's important to them. Normally a, a dog ad would say, heartworm negative, it's probably gonna be you know 80 pounds total, eight months old, black, you know, it just, those are features and functions. That is not why people want a dog, I promise. We all know that, right? We all have dogs. Okay, so here's the, here's the formula again. You're gonna see this multiple times because this is the most important thing to burn into your brain. A green dollar sign, a red clock, and a toolbox. The RTH formula, results, timeline, and how. This will change your life, and let me tell you why. The world has changed. So in 2000, we had 12 seconds attention spans. And the reason we know that is because of how long people stayed on websites. People would stay on a page for 12 seconds before they clicked on something or moved on to another or got off the page, 12 seconds. So then, then as time went on, more web pages came up and we got kind of used to it. It went down to nine seconds. And it's been eight seconds for the last five years, but with Gen Z's coming out, this is an on-demand group. They've never had to rent a movie. They've never had to wait in line for anything. They can find a Christmas movie in June and watch it. They are on demand. Colleges have adapted. You know, I, when I went to college, if you didn't go to class, it affected your grade. Today, they're like, don't worry about it. It'll be, the, the, it'll we'll record it. You can watch it in your dorm room. I mean, I've had, par I've had parents of kids in college complain to me this last year because the kids don't leave the dorms. They don't go out to get food. They have it delivered. They watch their classes in the room. They don't leave. 
why are they paying these huge tuition and dorm? Why not just do it at home? Which <laughs> this was pre-COVID. Now we know the answer to that. The other thing is I want to show you, this is actually a screenshot of my phone. This is just email over 71,000, almost 72,000 unread emails. But that's not everything. I have Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook. And now there's all these other things like um, Parler. And I mean, oh my gosh, I can't even keep up with all of, all of the data that's coming at us. Our attention spans are down to three minutes, no matter what age you are. Not because we're losing our patience. Our environment has changed so much. We have no choice. We have three seconds. So if you're starting your prospect emails with, my name is, my company does, I work for, you're done. You're in those 72,000 emails I haven't read. Start with results, RTH. And, and just think about this. The goldfish has a nine second attention span. A goldfish has more attention than us. And by the way, 30 years ago, they had a nine second attention span. The, the world of a goldfish has not changed as drastically as our environment has. Okay, and that's it for today. This was just basics, there's so much more. But if you understand these principles, you can literally change your life and your relationships. If you will start talking their talk, instead of your talk. Talk about them, make it interesting to them, make it about them, instead of talking about what you do. And then I want to give you an offer. If you will tweet, post on Facebook, Instagram, tweet, I don't care what venue you use, but if you will do at least five posts with a hashtag ViznoStic, then I will send you a free book and I'll even sign it for you. So I hope this was worth your time. Have a great evening and uh, happy business.